toxins. You know, this topic looks very easy. It's uh, difficult to teach and very difficult to understand. But anyway, sexual offenses is all about the crimes related to the sex coming under sexual offenses. The sexual offenses are classified <coughs> into three. One is called natural sexual offenses. Second is called unnatural sexual offenses. And third is sexual perversions or deviations. Natural sexual offenses, it is being permitted by the God by means of penis through vagina, which is permitted by the God. And the typical examples are rape, zinabijabar, incest. These are examples of having from a natural root. When the person is validly married to a female, he will have a sex with her that will be an, coming under natural sexual offenses. But natural sexual offenses can be legal, can be illegal. The legal one, as I said, when the person is uh, properly being married, solemnly married to a female, that will be a natural sexual offense. And uh, zina biljabar, zina, and incest, these are type of illegal sexual offenses. A person who will have a rape or in Muslim terminology called zina biljabar, will have with someone, then the proceeding will start. Somebody will put an allegation in the court or in the police station, and the allegation will start. But before proceeding, I must tell you that, you know, I must tell you that this is about uh, the, by the nature to produce creature and to reproduce the offspring and uh, to have an existence of its products, it requires a mechanism and there is a gender discrimination, male and female will be there. Organ of uh, generation will be there. And uh, maybe it is a process in a comfort or enjoyment or a relaxation for reputation. So it is uh, basically means is natural means. And uh, the legal one I told you is the marriage according to the prescribed uh, way will be a natural type. Then natural sexual offenses are basically uh, legal and illegal. And legal one is uh, like a marriage. And illegal one is uh, rape, zina, and uh, incest and fornication. Basically, rape, it is an unlawful sexual intercourse by a man with a woman without her consent, by putting her in fear, by impersonation, even his wife under the age of 13 years or any woman above the age of 14 years is enough to commit a crime of rape. Section 375 Pakistan Penal Court defines rape and 376 is for the punishment for the rape. But I must tell you that 
the punishment these days we are giving according to the hudud ordinance and according to the hudud ordinance if the person will commit a crime of rape if he is a mohsin mohsin is the is the terminology if a married man who has his own wife at home and if he commits this crime and if he is a mohsin married man he will be stoned to death and he will be caught in an open area at a fajr time upper will be removed he will be over the clamp people will start stoning he will get critically injured then he will be fired and he will die this is the punishment for rape there is another terminology this was about rape there is another terminology which is in muslim law which is called zina bil jabr and zina bil jabr is identical of for rape in western law the punishment for rape is 6 to 10 years and the fine up to 10000 rupees something but the thing is that uh, this is rape this is an abuse job what is the difference between these two the difference is rape it is a unlawful sexual intercourse by a man with a woman without her consent by putting her in fear by impersonation even as wife under the age of 13 year any woman above the age of 14 year is called a rape this is western terminology most of the time is been asked what is the difference between these two the difference is in zina bil jabr and uh, rape the difference is only the punishment difference the punishment is stoning to death according to muslim law let me tell you that second thing is is called zina zina is also called fornication and in older days the the female used to put allegation on some person for blackmailing reasons for any other reason and that the number of complaints were many in the courts the law for fornication was made if it will be disapproved then the punishment will be given to the person who has put an allegation so then the you know number of cases started coming down zina is a willful sexual intercourse by a man with a woman zina is a willful sexual intercourse by a man with a woman and or woman with a man this is called zina in muslim law it has a equal punishment like a rape and if the person he is mohsin on the person is a mohsina then they will be stoned to death and if the person is mohsin and the female was not mohsin then she will have 100 strikes if the person is a mohsin will be stoned to death if the person is not a mohsin he is not a married man he will be having 100 strikes kore pade to so zina is a willful sexual intercourse by a man with a woman with her consent and this is called zina according to the western law is no uh, crime in western law when the person will have the intercourse with the consent of a female then is no crime but in muslim law it is equal crime just like that is another story that we will come to that for the punishment that uh, if zina has been committed and somebody has you know uh, put a complaint but you know it requires four respectable people as a witness who have seen all of the act this is very necessary we are coming to that so rape zina bil jabr zina these are the there is another thing called incest incest is a having sexual relation having sexual relation with the blood relatives like a father with a daughter a brother with a sister this is called incest it is uh, very common in the 
places where the people are living in a very crowded places and uh, there's too much uh, noise pollution over there I don't know. it's hot humid so this is about the then these are the natural sexual offenses by means of parents through vagina whether legal or illegal how we will examine we will come to that but to make you understand the classification the unnatural sexual offenses are always illegal unnatural sexual offenses are by any other route than the normal route and uh, the excuse me no man disturbance more than noise pollution board so the unnatural sexual offenses the examples are sodomy bestiality lesbianism masturbation again the unnatural sexual offenses are sodomy bestiality lesbianism masturbation the masturbation it is rubbing the glands penis by means of a hand to have a gratification and this is called masturbation it is very common lesbianism is when two female they rub their clitoris in a contract for gratification when two females in a contract they rub their clitoris in a contract this is called lesbianism or tribalism then is homosexuality that is called sodomy sodomy is having a sexual intercourse by means of penis through anus even his wife through anus is called sodomy again sodomy it is a unnatural type of sexual offense it comes under section 377 pakistan penal code and uh, in sodomy it can be homosexual it can be heterosexual can be with a man with a man can be man with a woman and can be man with a woman even his wife through the anus is called the sodom is a long story we will discuss in next lecture so sodomy it is having a sexual intercourse by means of penis through the anus unnatural route is called sodomy it is also called burglary etc etc the last one is called the bestiality the bestiality it is having a sexual intercourse by a man with a lower animal may be bigger size animals which male prefers like a donkey like a cow like a goat etc and lower animal smaller animals like a cat like a dog like this. so when a person he uh, have a sexual intercourse by a lower animal is called bestiality it is also a uh, you know common been report reported to our center etc so this is unnatural sexual offenses then we have the sexual perversions the sexual perversions i think it's not in this uh, slide uh sexual perversions are the deviations sexual offenses are classified to three natural sexual offenses which the god has permitted for unnatural sexual offenses which is bred by the social and moral values unnatural root and the sexual perversions it is the deviations in which the person will have a sexual gratification maybe in which the intercourse is been involved maybe it is not involved maybe just by looking at the opposite sex articles maybe just licking the uh, urine or or uh, fecal matter so the different different type of terminologies in this when the person is crazy for the sex his daily life is around the sex this is called the this person is called pervert and the things coming under that is called the sexual perversions i told you in which maybe the sex will be involved or maybe sex will not be involved at all <clears throat> maybe the person will give pain will give 
will bite, will beat, etc. to the opposite partner like a female. And when she will scream, when she will feel uncomfortable, he will feel sexual gratification from inside and then he will go for sex. This is called sadism. Another is called fetishism. Maybe the guy, he will look at the opposite sex articles and he will keep on going behind her. He will look at the, you know, that female, the opposite sex articles, and after that will feel gratification from inside. This is in which the sex is not involved. He'll come back home. He will feel good. He will feel comfortable. He will enjoy and he will go to sleep. This is called the fetishism. Opposite to sadism was masochism. In masochism, in masochism, the female will give pain to the male partner, will tie down and will uh, bite, will pull hair when he will feel pain, she will feel gratification and after that they will go and have a sex. This is called the deviation. These are called perversion. We will talk in detail about in next lecture. So, the Um, slide number seven points here. So now, this was the classification talking about rape. The talking about rape, I told you, it is by the natural route and uh, which the God has permitted for can be legal can be illegal and uh, the legal one we are not going to touch it but the rape the first one because in all these cases in all these cases of uh, uh, the legal uh, natural sexual offenses or the unnatural sexual offenses you will be getting the natural sexual offenses, the person will be reporting to you, the female will be reporting to you, and the female will be examined, and obviously it will be from the natural root. We are not talking about pseudomy with the heterosexual, pseudomy with the wife, uh, through anus, we are not talking about unnatural, we are talking about natural sexual offenses. So in all these natural sexual offenses, the zina, the rape, the incest, the fornication, all these cases, you know, the female, when you will examine her, then you will put the patient into a position, you will examine her vaginal orifice to have a confirm or confirmation, right? Well, I told you in the beginning that the rape, it is an irrigation easily been made but it is hard to prove and harder to disapprove rape i told you there was a fornication law fornication was being made but the rape it is very easy to put an allegation on anybody the person has been raped i tell you one thing i tell you one thing that rape it is an unlawful sexual interval by a man with a woman without attraction by putting her in fear, by impersonation, even his wife under the age of 13 years or any, any woman over the age of 14 years. This is the day. But for committing a crime of rape, it is not in, uh, necessary to have a whole coitus. It is not necessary to have a whole coitus. It is just touching the penis near the vagina is enough to commit a crime of rape. Again, rape it is an allegation easily been made is hard to prove when you will examine it will be hard to prove and it will be harder to disapprove okay i told you that in all these cases you are going to examine a female in natural sexual offenses and after natural sexual offenses how will you examine the female you examine the female first of all 
you need to have a police letter after the police letter after the police letter you take the consent of a female after the police letter because who told you to go for it after the you know later you need to go for a uh, consent consent has a legal value you need to need to take a permission what is consent consent is a permission or willingness that you will describe everything to her and you will start examining her and uh, in in this you will take a consent from her if she gives you consent you will ask her to sign over the letter over your report sign on the side written consent will be taken you will describe everything that i will examine you and you know it will be in your favor but in few of the cases what happens maybe it is jina and maybe she was having a beautiful sexual intercourse with a man but maybe some of the people some of the relatives saw her she will start denying that you will be having a patient in front of you after police letter you will take a consent you will put a third female attendant next to you like a nurse or like any of the from the ward you will after taking consent putting third female attendant you will go for general examination of the body cardiology you will take a general examination then you will go for a local examination then you go for internal examination general examination you will note down any injuries over the body some kind of a defense mark some kind of uh, abrasion some kind of a brazil maybe she was on a grant and she was trying to save herself big size of abrasion at the back called grazes grazes has a great value in case of uh, in case of a uh, rape and uh, you will keep on listening her story and uh, you will decide later on you will not make any controversy with the patient after the consent general examination you note down all the injuries over the body you will just try to find out she was she was wearing she was wearing uh, actually this place is crowded um, so uh, you will just keep on listening will you please give me your statement what actually happened with you you take her uh, history and when you will be giving her history you will keep on looking that uh, whether it matches with the with the history or not the findings over the clothes whether she was wearing same clothes or whether she has changed what are the graze marks what are the different bruise marks what are the different bite marks maybe imprint abrasions imprint teeth marks will be there on the cheek or the breast you will calculate the time since injury whether it matches or not by the bruises by the abrasions by the grazes you will just keep on as i told you section 375 defines rape which i gave you again and again and section 376 is for the punishment of rape and uh, first of all you will uh, look all these letters then you look for you will just write preliminary data get in from consent get a sign from her then you ensure privacy history may be taken from the female and uh, you will not keep on asking questions direct direct questions from her and uh, but you will look for that whether she was under the influence of some drug or something maybe somebody gave her Uh, a road poisons like a uh, dhatura like uh, maybe bhang majun ganja hashish or some something or uh, you will just keep uh, an eye on that and a history of previous experience 
ask for the time of episode and uh, reporting to relatives and police, both for uh, any delay in informing or putting an FIR. So these are the things that you will take a history and history has a great value. In history, it includes the place of occurrence, resistance was used by the friend, uh, whether the course are same or being changed. And if they are same, you will get find the marking over it, maybe blood mark, maybe semen marks, maybe uh, some kind of uh, tearing of the clothes, etc. And the position of the victim and the offender, and maybe the penetration, how much uh, deep the person has gone, and the uh, tenderness still persisting or not, and uh, the cleaning of the private parts, maybe more time has passed, you've got to the washroom and that. So history has a great value. This is where value is between you will decide. Being a, a doctor, being a you know observer, you will decide whether this was a rape or whether this was a zina. Uh, and uh, so you will look for the drugs. If uh, the drug is there, then um, if the person is drowsy, you will take the blood for sending for the analysis. You will look for the whether the resistance were offered or not the clothes, uh, the condition of the clothes which she was wearing at the same time. And uh, there was, uh, there is a thing called Locard Exchange Principle. The Locard was one of the scientists. He said when two things come in contact with each other, there is a nature exchange of articles between them. And this is called Locard Exchange Principle. And this comes under trace evidence as well. This Locard Exchange Principle will be very important. Then you will be looking for the extent of penetration, the ejaculation, whether the marks of semen are there or not, and how much time has passed, whether she has washed, uh, gone to the washroom, or maybe the previous. These are the things which you will be examining in, in general examination. Then you go for a local examination, in local examination, you put the patient in the tummy position. The value of position is very important. There are different positions, like maybe in a in a rape, you put the patient in the reach tummy position. In case of sodomy, you put the patient in the knee elbow position like a dog. There are different other positions, like 69 position, like many other positions we will talk about today. Then in after general examination. You will ask the patient to unbutton her clothes. You will put a cellophane down there. She will be standing over it. You will unbutton her clothes by herself. You will not touch her. And in front of the third female attendant, the clothes will be removed. Any of the dander, any of the button, any of the foreign material will fall on the, uh, on the cellophane. You will just collect it. There are, you know, markings or epithelium under the nails. You will just collect it. And after that, you will note down any injuries over the body at the back, or resistance marks, defense wounds, or maybe graze marks at the back. You will note down. Bruise marks, you will note down. Then you will put the patient in a lithotomy position. Now you are going for a local examination. Local examination, that area, around the vaginal orifice, you will be examining and you will put the patient into lithotomy position, just like uh, uh, she's in a labor room and then the feet will be over the clamp and the local area will be in front of In Karachi, in Sin, the females are being examined by the female medical legal officer at the police surgeon office or at the centers maybe by the gynecologist and uh, you know, but in other parts of the country, uh, anybody can uh, do the examination. But it's always preferable to take a help and uh, to ask a female medical legal officer to come and examine. After this local examination, you will note down any injuries around the vagina or if it's, you will just comb the hair, any of the foreign pubic hair will be there. You will just collect it 
and how you collect it. You just put in a cellophane or you put over a cover slide, uh, slide over it and put a cello tape over it or put another slide and tie it down for sending for the analysis again. You will just comb the pubic hairs. She's in a lethotomy position. You will comb the pubic hairs. Any of the foreign hair, you will just put in a cellophane or you put over a slide and put another slide over it and tie it down for sending a letter. If the wet markings of a semen are there, you will just make a slide and dry it under the fan, put another slide over it, tie it down, keep it for sending for the chemical analysis, but dry it before that. If you get any blood, which is a wet, uh, specimen, you will just make a slide, put another slide over it, tie it down, keep it for right under the fan, keep it for sending for the analysis. If the dried matted hairs are there with the with the semen, you will just cut them and you will put in a cellophane for sending for the analysis. If the blood is there in an inner thigh, you will scrape it and you put over a slide and uh, you just uh, uh, tie down and uh, you, you will uh, send for the analysis, these uh, things. So this is local finding, then you will look for the vaginal orifice and the vaginal, but, but I tell you one again, once again, that uh, for a rape, it is not necessary to have a whole coitus, just touching the penis near the vagina is enough to commit a crime of rape. and. Uh, and even an important person, it comes in a BCQ, even an important person can make a rape and is touching the penis near the vagina is enough to commit a crime of rape. So the important person can even make a rape. This is, uh, you know, actual crime. Then you will use your left thumb and index finger. It is given in a parik. You will open the vaginal orifice to look for the presence of hymen. If the female was virgin, you will look for the hymen and you will insert one little finger if it is going by difficulty, she is virgin. And if it is going easily, you will pass one finger, then you pass two fingers and two, when two fingers they pass, then she lost her virginity. You look for the hymen, whether the hymen has been torn recently or it is tender to touch or pleased to touch. You calculate time since injury from that. You just match with the, with the history. And or maybe this female was already married woman and the hymen was hymen mitriformis. You will find that the finding will be a thick fold of uh, this hymen will be all around. And this is called hymen mitriformis. Now, you have examined locally as well then you go for specimens and you go for a superficial slide and deep slide. You take a, a, you know, a stick and uh, with, from the vaginal orifice, you take the uh, take that specimen and you make a slide, dry it, put another slide, tie down, keep it for sending for the analysis and deep slide will be made. I will not repeat it again. Deep slide, this was superficial slide over the vaginal orifice. And uh, deep slide will be made. You take 15 ml of the slime, you push inside the vaginal, uh, you know, posterior fornix, and you keep it for some time. The book says you have to shake the patient in my, uh, uh, this lecture also, that you have to shake the patient from the buttocks. But you push inside 15 ml of the slime, and after 10 minutes, you will just collect the sample Without the needle, you will just collect the sample and you just put a tag and you will send for chemical analysis. This is how you, this is how the, uh, we were talking about the examination of the clothes, then the, uh, any of the markings, any of the foreign material uh, over, the, over the person. And then you examine the body, general examination, bruises, abrasions, you will just look at it. You will look at the bite marks because when the person will try to grab a female, obviously he will use a force. And when he will use a force, he will try to grab her uh, in his hand. There will be bruise marks and maybe there will be injuries or marking of the, of the nails. The contusions will be over the breast. 
may be bite marks will be there on the breast or the cheek. These are called imprint abrasions, etc. Then on the genitals, you will find you will put on a lithotomy position. You will find the injuries in the area. You will find because uh, the pressure has been used. You will find that the uh, some kind of uh, secretions will be there, the stains of the blood or the semen will be there, or maybe uh, you know these things will be there which you will collect. Then the what is specimens you will preserve preserve that when you were examining the patient, she was standing over the cellophane, some kind of uh, any any dander, any kind of a button, any kind of a foreign material, any kind of a hair, any kind of semen, whether matted, whether uh, over the vaginal orifice, whether the deep posterior fornicate you have collected, you will be if. Uh, you're taken from the super, uh, superficial slide that from the vaginal orifice, you will make a slide and you will dry it and then you put another slide over it, tie it down and send for the analysis. Same way the blood dried or, uh, or wet or maybe fecal matter or maybe any other material will be there. The dry, then dry the clothes by hanging them in open atmosphere because maybe they will go towards petrifaction. And if the patient is reported to you in no time and uh, the wet secretions are there, <clears throat> you will just keep it for sending for the analysis. And these things are called chain of chain of custody when you take a few things, articles from the person, male or a female, whatever, and you just uh, seal it and keep it for sending it for the analysis. This is called chain of custody. And uh, you encircle that area put number, date, sign, signature, everything over it, seal over it, and pack them in a piece of paper. You know, when you go for an examination, when you go for a medical boards, the material or these shalwar or these uh, kameez or maybe pants are being sent uh, to us with a seal. They were lying in a, in a, in a safe custody. And when they will be sent to you, you will open it and you will match it. You will just look at it, etc., etc. So the these uh, labeled uh, articles are being sent for chemical analysis. Whatever is found on the plastic sheets is also being collected, and uh, each specimen separate container is being used, sealed, and being labeled. Pubic hair, you just comb the pubic hair. I told you if you will find any of the foreign dander, foreign button, foreign hair, you will just put over a slide and just put a cello tape or you put another slide and you tie down. Same way, if you take a matted hairs uh, with, the, with the blood or maybe the semen, you will take that as well. You put a cellophane bag and seal it, tag it, name it, etc. But also a control sample, few of the um, hairs are being plucked and these are normal samples are also being sent. These are called control sample. Then matted pubic hair, shave the area, put the hair in a bottle, label it, etc. Send it for another. Then swabs are being taken, pre hymenal swab, post hymenal swab, or maybe superficial or maybe deep swabs are being taken. Dried seminal stain, these can be found on the pen area and thick scrape it with the help of a blunt scalpel. Keep this dried specimen in the chest tube. If thin, apply cotton mounted on an applicator, moisture with the normal saline by sweeping movement. Specimen is collected and kept in a crystallized bottle. Saliva will be taken, nail scraping are being taken as well. And uh, <clears throat> these are also being saved. Blood, urine, there are different kind of tests you perform for blood, for semen, for... But now going back, going back, talking about this was the examination of a rape victim. This was about the examination of the rape victim. I told you the sexual offenses are the offenses related to the crime coming under sexual offenses. Allegation has been made it is not a proof. Allegation has been made on your report. Maybe it will be proved and the person will be 
you know, in a jail. Later on, the person who has been alleged will be caught, will be put in jail, and the proceeding will start. And uh, the natural sexual offenses are there, and natural sexual offenses are there, sexual perversions are there. Natural sexual offenses, which the God has permitted for, by means of penis through vagina, unnatural sexual offenses, which the God has not been permitted for, which are bad by the social and the moral value, these are called the unnatural sexual offenses. And most of the time, it is by means of hand, by means of uh, rubbing clitoris, by means of having sexual relation uh, um, intercourse with the lower animal. And uh, above all is a sodomy, which is most common. And uh, there are people who have this for a fun, for making money, etc., or hobby reasons. And these hijras or khusras or gays, they are involved in this. Um, and we will discuss in our next lecture that what are the findings of that. Now, the natural sexual offenses, unnatural sexual offenses, and sexual perversions, which are in which the person is crazy for sex, maybe the, the whole of the act is involved, maybe the act is not involved, maybe just watching is enough, maybe just uh, he is looking, he is peeping inside the room, or he is uh, watching the movies, uh, prono movies, or he is, so these, in these cases, we call the, the guy a pervert, and the study is called the perversions, I told you, that may be sadism, fetishism, masochism, tribalism, uranism, uh, all these are the different terminologies. It is also very common. But I tell you, in, in perversions, it's a psychiatry, it's a psychiatry. We will discuss in our next lecture. Now, the natural, unnatural perversion, these were there. We were talking about natural sexual offenses. And I told you the natural sexual offenses, uh, it is a rape or it is a sin. It is a rape or it is a sin. In Arabic, the rape is called zina bil jabr. And the zina, it is no term in Western law, it is legal. In a Muslim law, the zina is same kind of having a same kind of punishment what a person is having for the rape, depending on the Mosin and a non Mosin. The person, Mosin, what is Mosin? Mosin is a married man who has his own wife, but when he it is committing, when he is committing a rape with the female, he has his own wife at home. And if this man is a married man, he performs this. When it gets proved, I told you it is very difficult to disapprove it. And uh, it is very easy to put an allegation. And if you put allegation on anybody, you know, his rapport will be on stake. And uh, you just put an allegation on anybody that you are that guy, he is not a good man, that, that guy, he is uh, he misbehaves. So, you know, how come they, that guy will come to know and it will be very difficult to, to stop anybody or everybody and say, no, 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 I'm not like this. This is an allegation. It is not being proved. It is an allegation. So when the allegation is being, being based on any of the person, the police will catch the person and uh, will, um, police will take this female, will said to the doctor, Madam, will you please kindly examine this lady and let us know whether she has been raped or not. You will go for an examination and in an examination you go for a preliminary data. First of all, look at the police letter. Then you look for uh, the, you ask for the consent. Consent is a willing permission. Then you ask the, for a signature. If he says, if she says it will be secure, then no, I don't want to go through with an examination. You try to convince her, but if she's not willing, then you cannot uh, examine her. Write on a piece of that paper that she is not allowing me to examine. I'm sending her back. You will send her back. So third female attendant will be placed. Then you for look for a history. Then you go for a general examination. 
and then local examination, then internal examination. Rape. I told you that in case of a rape, it comes under Section 375 Pakistan Panel Court. And uh, it is an unlawful sexual intercourse by a man with a woman without her consent, by putting her in fear that I will kill your son, etc. And by putting her in fear, by impersonation, showing that he is the same person, her same husband who was uh, on, a, on a war and became prisoner of war, came back. Uh, I'm the same person and uh, we were, you know, um, as we got married, I was called to the front and I left. Now I have a beard, but I'm the same person. We will go have a sex with the female because when the people, they live together in a barracks, in a jail, in a, in a hostel, they keep on sharing their, you know, uh, what is going on, what is the problem at the back home, etc. etc. So the person or a partner will be doing everything, he will come back to somebody, somebody's place and he will show that I'm the same person. So impersonation will be there or any woman uh, above the age of 14 years or even his wife under the age of 13 years, she is immature, then you know that will be coming under section 375 Pakistan Penal Court. So I told you that uh, when you are examining this case, you have uh, a terminology called Mohsin. And a Mohsin is a Muslim adult man or a woman who is not insane, had a sexual intercourse with a Muslim adult uh, woman at the time he had a sexual intercourse with her, was not married to him. They were knowing each other that they were not married to each other, etc. And they have a sex. The guy who's married at home as his own wife, he will be called as the Mohsin. And Mohsin has a value for the stoning to death and the punishment. If the person is Mohsin, the punishment is more that is stoning to death. If the person is non Mohsin, he's a not married man, non married man, then he will have 100 stripes in that case. Well, so. This is the other word. This is the Muslim terminology that is called Zina Bil Jabbar. A person is said to commit Zina Bil Jabbar if he has a sexual intercourse. In a Western law, male is the active person because he has the organ. And if male will make, uh, you know, a um, charge of a fee over a female, will be caught for a rape. But if the female will, uh, try to grab him, etc. He, she will be caught for an indecent assault. This indecent assault is also being given over there in a, in a law relating to medical men when a doctor, when he will examine a female and he will go more further and he will, without uh, taking the consent, uh, start touching the private parts or without uh, taking uh, consent from the female, like, uh, will you please lie down? I want to palpate your abdomen. Will you please lie down? I want to examine you. If she gives a permission, well, if without permission, if the doctor will proceed, he will be caught for an indecent assault, etc. So, Zina bin Jabbar is a Muslim terminology and a person is said to commit a Zina bin Jabbar if she has a sexual intercourse. Um, with the woman, man to woman, he is not validly married in any of the following circumstances, will go for against the will without the consent or the consent has been obtained by putting a head in fear or impersonation. This is in a bill But in, I was trying to tell you that in a rape, male will be only the responsible person in Zina bil Jabbar. Uh, in Zinabi Jabbar, even a female is resp held responsible as well. But one thing is very clear that the punishment is uh, very severe in Muslim law. And uh, in this, the person will be stoned to death. 
these are the different ways by which the comments are in zina both the partners are guilty and liable for the punishment in case of a zina bil jabar only the offender is guilty according to the western law only man can do offense of rape whereas the woman can be guilty for indecent assault in our law women can also be an offender and uh, Mohsen, I told you it is a married man. This is a rape, unlawful sexual intercourse, and fornication. I told you that these days we um, uh, mostly, according to Muslim law, they have made the uh, they have made the law for fornication that if this allegation will be false and will come negative, then you will be, you know, uh, facing the punishment for that for so law since the law of fornication has come the cases has stopped uh, you know slowed down or the number of cases has been reduced what is fornication a man and a woman not married to each other are said to commit fornication if they will fully have a sexual intercourse with one another Whoever commits fornication shall be punished with the imprisonment for a term which may be extended to five years, and shall also be liable to be fined exceeding ten thousand rupees, etc., etc. This is the just the zina. What are the problems which we confront? I mean, the problem is if a woman, what you presume when you are taking a a history. What you presume, if a woman is not a consenting party, obviously she will just give the resistance. She will be just giving more and more resistance, and uh, there will be markings over the body. I told you, rape is an allegation easily being made and harder to prove and harder to disprove. In majority of the cases, the lady is consenting party, but if she is seen by someone, somebody. Or discovered by relative in, involved in sexual relationship, she often takes a plea that she was a non-consenting party. Maybe she will, she will deny. Sentence is awarded in case of a zina. Proved by it has to be proved by four respectable witnesses who are permanent resident of that area. According to the hadith, the death by stoning, which is called rejection. To both, if Mohsen and hundred is type, if not married, non Mohsen. For Zinabil Jabbar, if proved by four witnesses, had his death by stoning to male or a female, if Mohsen or hundred is type, if not Mohsen. For Zina, not liable to her sentence is ten years in Tazi, uh, according to Tazir. And uh, if for Zinabil Jabbar, not liable to her, and uh, if a person is not being, you know, dealt with that. Sentence will be twenty-five years imprisonment and fine. This is about the sexual offences, all the crimes. But one thing I tell you: unless and until there is a accused, there is a victim. There is a victim. There is an accused. The victim is the person who has received the aggression. The accused is the person who has done this job. This illegal job. This female will go to the police station. Will put an FIR. This female will go home. Will tell the people. People will take her to the uh, police lockup, and uh, uh, and the police station will put an FIR. And when they will have an FIR, the police will make a letter. Will send this female with a letter to you. In civil hospital and trauma center in Daw University Hospital, they will send the female with a police letter to you, with a policeman without the female policeman, and you will look at the police letter and you will start taking the consent. You go according to the proceeding, right? Now, uh, please ask questions from me. And uh, you will start examining in Daw University Hospital or trauma center in a medical legal section or police surgeon office. You will be examining the female, and you will just write down all these things and three kind of examination: preliminary data after the consent, after the female attendant, the uh, history. You will just write down preliminary data, general examination, 
of the body, local examination, internal examination, and then you will uh, preserve the specimens and you will write a report. According to my opinion, <clears throat> the female has gone through with the rape and these markings were there, but it is not necessary that maybe it is a false allegation. These uh, uh, semen markings are maybe egg white, maybe it is a gum. Blood markings are there. Maybe it is uh, iron strain on the clothes, or maybe it is uh, pigeon blood, or it is an animal blood, or maybe it's a true allegation, etc., etc. So you will take the scraping from the nails. You will take all these things, and this is justice through science. And you will just take the specimen. You will send for analysis. For semen, there are certain tests, preliminary tests, confirmatory tests. There are for blood, for free, for preliminary tests, confirmatory tests, ABO grouping, etc., etc., etc. So you will be examining a case of a rape victim, and this is uh, when it will be proved. This accused will be caught, and the proceeding will start, and it will go to the court. And according to the Hudud ordinance, according to the Had, according to the Tazir, according to so the person will be punished, etc. Et Any question? Yes. No. Uh, the question has been asked that sex between wife and husband is also rape, is forcefully committed. No. Husband and wife, if legally married, then uh, <clears throat> this is a, uh, a contract made at the time of nikah that this is uh, the person will have a natural sex. And uh, with any other person with a force, that will be uh, rape, not with the wife. Any other question? So can you repeat, Mohsen? Mohsen, I told you, he's a married man. One guy, he commits a crime, he go for a rape, he catches a female in a hospital, on a roadside, in a dark place, <clears throat> and tries to have a coitus with her, but he is unable to do, go for it. But the thing is, he will be in a problem. He will be in a, you know, reported to the police. He will be lately, sooner or later will be caught. And then this man who is a Mossin or is a, who is a non-married man. If he's a married man, he's called Mossin. And if he commits a crime, then he will be stoned to death. If the person is a non Muslim, non married man, he will have a hundred strikes. What does it mean to be not liable to hurt? In few of the cases, maybe the person is, uh, uh, he is a Christian, person he is a non Muslim, then he is not coming under the Hudud ordinance. We cannot catch him, put him under the Had or Hudud. So then we will go for any other, right? That will be. Tazi or there are two, under 16 and along 13 years. Basically, maturity, the maturity age for a female is earlier than a male. Female 16 year old and male 18 year old is a mature guy. But the our definition for rape says that uh, you must have seen quite many times on a television that a uh, very old guy he got married with one of the uh, he bought bought that female and got married to her so the female under the age of 13 year female you know at one time in a in a uh, hot climatic countries and uh, according to our our muslim books a few ladies were getting matured even at 9 years of age but they have put a you know, line for uh, in a definition of a rape that even his wife under the age of 13 years or any movement of the age of 14 years will be coming under rape. Fornication and zina are the same thing. Yes, fornication and zina are the same terminologies, and um, this is zina is a Muslim. Law. What is the punishment for some who calls me to use a person for rape? Actually, when somebody will put an allegation, law of fornication was made, that uh, if, uh, if if somebody will put a false allegation, then the court will decide that uh, this will be your punishment. Any other question? Hmm? Thank you very much. We are going over.
our time. Thank you.